Welcome to the video. Our lad Louis, who's a second year apprentice, won the regional heat in the Guild of Bricklayers competition. Our heat was in Wiltshire, Swindon, and we've travelled all the way up to Tamworth, which is about a two hour drive from our office in Swindon, to the NHBC Training Centre, which is run in partnership with Red Row Homes. So today is the final. So Louis is representing us in the Guild of Bricklayers final in the junior section. So we'll get inside, we'll have a look, see how he's getting on. We've got Joe from Brick Jackets here, we've got Stabilla here, and we've also got Grayson's as well as a few other sponsors and trade stands as well. So it should prove to be a really interesting day. So let's go and see how Louis is representing us in the competition. It's a tough gig, I've got to say, I've seen the drawing. It's a tough gig, but let's see how he's getting on. He's probably got an hour left, I reckon. So NHBC <laughs> Training Hub in partnership with Red Row. And there's our Lou over there in the middle. Oh, he's cracking on. How are you getting on, Steve? All right, mate? There he is, our Lou. He's cracking on now. He's motoring. Yeah. That's a good experience for him, isn't it? The fact that you're in the funnel. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's an achievement in itself. Yeah, 100%. But yeah, so where's this? Is this right hand side junior sections? Yeah, These definitely. lads over here, junior, and over here is the seniors. So seniors obviously got something a bit more complicated or a bit bigger, aren't they? So that's the seniors one. I was going to say, that one was just projecting, wasn't it? I think that little detail on the front, the swimming competition. Oh, and they got the little pier on the side, did they? So yeah. In fact, I reckon that. I reckon that one's easier than, yeah. than, the, than, the, than the regional. Yeah, it was projecting, wasn't it? So, but yeah, Louis, Louis's cracking on. How many has he got left? Three on top of that. Three on top of that, has he? What's he got left? How long? We should have to three o'clock. Three o'clock. Ah, good. Oh, he's, got, he's got an hour and 20, then. Is it rate joint or is it... Bucket different, handle, different, different, different sections, is it? Uh, bucket handle, um, so there's a little bit on the front of the grip on it, but it's going to drop. Right, okay. Uh, right. Go on, Lou. Let's have a look then, Lou. What we got then, mate? Uh, for the judges, don't grab you. Is that what you're building then, yeah? What's that? They give what? Oh, did they? Well, I'm not coaching just yet. Nah, nah. So what's that? What's that there? Ah, oh, right. It's lower down. Okay. Right. No worries. Yeah. So you're about just under halfway then, aren't you, I reckon. Yeah. How long have you had on that so far? Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. So that's you over there, yeah. Two and a half hours. Mind you, you've done the. You've got it all set out now, haven't you? Yeah. So now it's just building. So just make sure you get the details right. Yeah, so some people slap it down straight away. I'm just like, just yeah, sat there drawing it. Take your time setting it out. Yeah, yeah. Make sure it's all done. Right. Not the easiest thing to build, is it? Jesus Christ. Yeah. See, this is where the space is coming handy, do you know what I mean? That's yeah, 10, yeah. 15, 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, so you ain't got a tape measure to time. keep getting out. But are you finding it a little right? Yeah, it's good. A bit nerve wracking, mate, or not? Yeah, a bit difficult. But... <laughs> well, you, you won the last one, mate, so just enjoy the process and uh, take Try your time it, and make sure, it's, make sure you get it right. And then it's all down to the market, isn't it? Enjoy the process, mate. So, what time you? What time's lunch finish? Uh, a minute ago. A minute ago. So you better get layer, mate. Yeah. yeah. Right. Take your time, mate. All right. Keep composure. And you do all right. Got the Grayson's mortarboard stand here. Look, kind of cool. This is they do a taller version as well. But that's quite convenient. That I like that. Nice little setup. That Grayson spot board and the Grayson spot board holder. Very nice. Nice. What's that? Probably 450 I reckon. I think they do a 600. It's all the kit. They got the muck from CPI as well out of the silo. Which makes life a little bit easier, a little bit more pliable, a little bit easier to work with. And there's the spot board stand as well. So each each apprentice gets a spot board stand and a spot board. And they get all their muck and all their bricks provided for them as well. So all this section here is the junior section. Up there is the senior section. 
with a slightly more complicated build. So Louis's got an hour and 20 minutes left to finish. He's got another three courses and a bit of brick on edge as well. So it'd be nice if he brings home the gold, but nonetheless, good experience for him. Right, let's go and see if I can find the footprint, boys, shall I? This is Mr. Footprint, and if you don't know Footprint, you're not really a proper bricklayer. So this is the mould for the bolster, yeah? That is a forged brick bolster. Yeah. Uh, it's a bad forging. Forged steel didn't spread whilst it was red hot, so yeah. that's why I've taken this one out. But we forge it, and then we cut this off whilst it's still hot, we cut the scrap off. Yeah. And that's the first stage of making brick bolsters. So that's a four inch one, Nick. So yeah. You do a four and a half inch we one, which is what inch, I four use. Four and a half inch, three inch, and then a two and a quarter inch quasi four inch chisel slash brick bolster. Yeah. And I've also got your lump hammer as well yep. on my desk, ready to review. Um, but I do like the footprint. I prefer the four and a half inch bolster. Yep. And you can't beat your footprint pins as well. Got a load of those which are, now. Which, yeah, see, so for all the bricklayers, this is all I'd ever use. I know we don't tend to tap them into gone off work, but when you do, which occasionally you have to, you know, the cheaper pins always bend and you can't you can't beat a footprint and i do like to support british companies and steel sheffield made it's a no-brainer for me so what generation are you now in the business fourth generation fourth generation my brother are. they reckon the third generation normally screw businesses up so you've done all right because you're the fourth we did close in 2008 oh did yeah. you <laughs> yeah so so where are you in terms of turnover against where you was to where you are now still not quite up to where we not are not quite so there when we closed we lost the whole market yeah uh, everybody else piled in took over yeah so we lost a lot of customers who've sold us products for years yeah to deal with us um, so we're, we're pouring it all back but we're being selected yeah we do issue all our lads with footprint tools yeah. and marshall town trials and stabila that's what we do three cracking brands there and marshall town stabila you can't go far wrong with them well you just pick up your bolster yeah. you just it just feels it feels the solid. Is, is it? We actually fully forged the handle. Yeah, um, it just, it's so just one piece then, is it? Yeah, well, all, all bolsters are usually one piece, but what other people do is they'll just heat up a bar of steel and they'll just forge the end. Put that on the so end, we actually, yeah. Because we closed die, forged the whole thing, yeah. we condensed the steel so that handle's even got loads of strength. Yeah, even yeah. though the handle's not been hardened, yeah. only the blade has, yeah. the handle's got loads of strength because we've compressed that steel so much that you can, it yeah. feels denser, it's heavier. Yeah. Um, yeah, when you come up, I'll get some samples for you to take a look at. And Christian was saying about your new pins as well. Um, your, your new... Well, we're not necessarily new pins. We've, we've changed the plating process. Yeah. Uh, so it's a big secret at the moment. We're just getting them out into the right, okay. Yeah, try I, won't, I won't put it on uh, YouTube then. Yeah. So far, people are saying good things, but I've only had them out for a week or so. Uh, good. Um, but good no, to meet you. Yeah. yeah well, interesting story. And we we support you. That's yeah. for sure. We do our little bit, as we do with all British brands. Right. And it's good to be part of it. Are you at, you're at Super Trial as well? Yeah, I'll be at Super Trial. We'll so, hope we'll have a little stand there. Uh, Footprint are there. I know Joe from Brick Jackets are there. Yeah. We're going up, so um, yeah, it should be a good good event, I reckon. So I don't know how I'll have to get him on. He's got 55 minutes left, so we'll see how he gets on. So there's a Brick Jacket stand, brickjackets.com for all your Brick Jacket needs. There we go. There's Joe, founder and owner of Brick Jackets, number one brand for protecting your bricks. Who else? We got Stabila over here. Know what everyone's going to ask me? Did I get any freebies? Here we go, coffee cup. He's going to give you <laughs> a coffee go. cup. <laughs> Got to have stability level. That boy's not really a Brit there. All right. Who else we got then? Brickwork, new brickwork reinforcement product here, which is a replacement for train tracks. So you know the rigid stuff you get, which can take your eye out. So this comes on rolls, which is a great design, great product. Uh, hopefully it's widely accepted. So you're probably all familiar with the brick jackets now, I would have thought. So Joe's actually developed um, a, a brick jacket for packs of bricks as well, Joe, yeah, right? Yeah, we certainly do, mate, yeah. So we do full pack size covers for bricks. Um, it's all the tailor made covered. All we, need, all we need is your measurements. So you can send your measurements over to us. They'll uh, allow us some tolerances and uh, generally turned around in about five, six days. And you do all the designs and all the in house printing as well, don't yeah. you? It's all, yeah. all under one roof. So if you want your uh, own in house like logos, etc., Joe Blogs Brickwork, we can certainly arrange that and uh, yeah, no problem, send them all out, logo printed up. So as a typical example, look, which this would just be replaced with your logo, website, whatever you want. So not only you're protecting the bricks, 
and improving the quality of work, you're getting your brand out there as well. And I'm a big believer in a strong brand. So how's business, Joe? All right? Not too bad, thank you. Yeah, yeah, all good. All Look, good. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to Super Trail? Certainly am. Yeah. Certainly am. 17th of August, Hartford Regional College. See you there. Really Great. looking forward to it. Great plug that was, Joe. <laughs> He's better than this YouTube malarkey than me. So yeah, hit up Brick Jackets, number one. Great product, simple, effective. And what a lot of people don't realize is the health and safety as well, because you're not tripping over bricks. One that are sticking out of the odd, of the stacks that are put out by the odd carrier, but also the color as well. Do you do different colors, Joe, or is it just yellow? No, we just do yellow. Um, full pack size covers are in white at the moment. Yeah. Um, we're sort of looking to sort of get the full pack size covers in yellow, but hopefully towards the back end of this year, we should have that sorted out so they'll come in yellow as well. Is there a reason you stick with yellow? Is that just your brand or? Yeah. No, it's just a brand color, sort of, uh, it's just the high vis color that I sort of first introduced when I brought the product to market and yeah. stuck with it and it seems to go well, catches the eye and uh, yeah. What about the um, print on it? Can that come in colours or is it yeah. just black? So like, if you wanted your own company logo printing, so what will happen, uh, your company logo will splash in the middle, we go in the bottom right hand corner, right. you can have yellow, uh, sorry, blue, red, the, uh, there's sort of a light blue colour as well, there's a maroon colour we do and you can obviously have black. There you go, there's your options lads. There we go, he also does jumpers, pencils as well. And his stand is secured. <laughs> right, lads, good save on the stand. Number one product for levels in the world, probably, isn't it? Yeah. German company. Yeah, all made in Germany. Precision. Precision the old, engineering. The old Germans always get it right, don't they? So these are designed, and these ones as well are, with the uh, the impact mats on them. Yeah. They're designed specifically for brickies, and that's why you have the, the vial offset close to the side. So it's at eye height on the four foot level. So the girder levels, a lot yeah. of traditional brickies, they love a girder level. Yeah, it's um, a nice level, to be fair. I've, I've never seen one stabiler one like that yeah. but that's a nice level to be fair so we have we have depth of range to allow people yeah, to yeah. Pick and choose what suits them suits them the most yeah you know there's more traditional levels like this and like that or there's newer ones you know you shouldn't really hit it with your child people do so you have the option option if you need it you watch that be in the comment section shouldn't be hitting, your, shouldn't hitting be it with your trowel yeah but that's what this is designed for yeah, yeah exactly. to protect it yeah. a little bit yeah it is i hit my level People do Disclaimer, do I do, but um, you shouldn't, but anyway. But I always use stability levels, always have done. I wouldn't get any other level. And I think any decent brick layer, I'll get slaughtered in the comments now. Any 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 brick layer that takes it seriously would probably use a stability level. I know that the pricier ones on the market, but you pay for what you get, in my opinion. Yeah. A lot of people know why a that good. And that's why we bring cutouts like that yeah. because the bit that makes the stabilla different to something else is what's on the inside of it. Yeah. So what you've got on the inside there is a fixed mount that's mounting all that system to the top and bottom. Yeah. So any sort of impact like that, it's not going to move the vinyl at all. It's yeah. not going to knock it out because it's all locked in place with this synthetic resin. Yeah. So we calibrate every single level before it leaves the factory. Yeah. And this synthetic resin is pumped through, so it's locked in place. Yeah. So that's why with any any stabilla level you've got, there's only two things that you can ever do to stop it from being accurate. Yeah. Break the aluminium profile or break the vial. So if What's you don't break it, it will be accurate. What's the tolerance level of? The, of your products so we say we claim 0.5 millimeter per meter accurate yeah the reality is we calibrate them to probably 0.1 or 0.2 in the factory yeah and um, but no i think precision german engineering is quite conservative in nature as well so yeah we we'll claim 0.5 but everything that leaves the factory is probably more and, more and higher yeah two. well in my opinion number one brand for levels in the world in my opinion so and even products like your laser levels and things like that that's what i use so you'll be in this week's episode <laughs> and the and the blooper <laughs> yeah. after the blooper the, uh, yeah. saving the tent flying over the wall yeah no but thanks lads well, cheers, good, thank good, nice bit of content for our lads right so here's louis attempt he didn't quite finish this is the finished product with a brick on edge on but he didn't quite finish but he's done a tremendous effort 
very neat and tidy, difficult bricks to lay, difficult bricks to cut. I think they should provide the queen closures, myself, Lou. But how did you find it, Louis? Uh, it's quite difficult. I messed up on some things, but it's a good experience. It's a good learning curve for you, mate, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Onwards and upwards, representing A&D. Kindly supported by Steve, his tutor. He's dragged them all the way up here. So what would you get in your goodie bag, Lou? Oh, what did you get, mate? Oh, a few oh, bits little... and pieces, little shield. Little nice, shield. I got one of them. Got a notepad. A little notepad. Get any... What you got in there? Is that a oh, drink? Yeah. It's got to be a drinks thing or something, can it? I think what I've got... Yep, yeah, little drink container. Little water bottle. Nice little house. Nice little NHPC <laughs> houselet. That's what I'm going to live So pull the wall ties are in. And, uh, and a pen. There we go. But it's the experience, isn't it? We got the shield, yeah. Well done, Lou. Proud of you, mate. Congratulations. Well done. Very good, mate. Right, that's it. Got a two-hour drive in front of me now, so better get on the road. But nice to catch up with Joe from Brick Jackets and Grayson's and Stabila. All them guys are going to be at the Super Trial event. So I'll see you all there. Massive congratulations to Louis to get into the final, representing a and and more importantly, representing himself. I hope you had fun, Lou. I know you didn't place, mate. I know you're disappointed, but you should be super proud of yourself, mate. You're going to go a long, 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 long way. And uh, well done from everyone at A&D. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you boys at the Super Trial. See you soon.